Hi, welcome to Donsky Tech. In this video, I'm going to show you how you can implement your own WebSocket server using the Micro.Web Web Framework and your Micro Python device. If you have been into stock market or Bitcoin trading, then you might be familiar with this type of charts that changes every seconds and displays the current price of the stock or the Bitcoin. We will create a similar application, but we will map it to an Internet of Things or IoT project settings. We will capture the sensor readings and display them in almost real time using a web application that communicates through WebSocket. I have chosen a sensor that changes instantaneously like this LDR or a light-dependent resistor or photoresistor, and we will interface with it to our micro python device we will create a web application that will display the sensor readings by talking to our micro python device through web sockets so what are we trying to solve in this project the goal of this video is to try to answer the following questions how do we create a web socket server in micro python how can we use web socket to display real-time sensor readings in micro python let us go to the demo of my project. So, I have here my Raspberry Pi Pico W device, my LDR or photoresistor together with some wires and my breadboard. We will try to access my custom web application by typing this URL. As you can see, this is my web application that will communicate with my micro python device the values that you are seeing here are the actual sensor readings from my ldr but you can see if i try to put my finger into my ldr then you would notice that the readings suddenly went up if i try to remove it then you would see that the sensor reading is now have gone down. So this is the real-time values that is being received from my LDR. And if I try to put and then remove my finger into my LDR, then you would see that the LDR sends the readings almost real-time to my MicroPython device. And we are able to see the display of the current readings using my web application. How cool is this, right? Would you like to know how I did this? Then let's start exploring. Hi! For me to continue creating useful content, please share, like, or comment on every video that I have created. Or better yet, subscribe to my page and click the notification button for you to receive the latest updates from me. But if you are generous enough, then you could support me by buying me a copy or through my patreon.com account. This would get me more motivated to create useful video content with code and excellent Python. Thank you! This image is the overall design of our project. Inside our MicroPython device is a WebSocket server built using Micro.Web Framework. The Micro.Web Framework creates a web application that will display the sensor readings through graph and a running display of sensor readings that is being updated in real time. The web application and our Micro.Web server will communicate through WebSocket so that the sensor readings coming from our LDR is being sent to a WebSocket message. By the way, the graphical chart is built using plotly.js and we will be asynchronously updating our web interface using JavaScript. So, why do you, we need to use WebSocket? The WebSocket protocol is mainly used when you need to display real-time data between your client and your server. 
Application that uses this protocol includes stock market or Bitcoin trading, chat applications for manufacturing monitoring systems. The HTTP protocol, which is the default protocol being used by our browser, is mainly used in web application, but it suffers serious problems, overhead problems, when it needs to send continuous data because of its architecture. HTTP, by default, has a request and response architecture and it cannot maintain the connection with the clients. The clients in this case are the browsers or any other web applications. At the same time, the web server cannot push data to its web clients as there is no persistent connection making it hard to use in real-time application. So this is where WebSocket was developed as it can maintain persistent connection and is full duplex and bidirectional. This means that if there's a fresh or new data that was received by the server, so in, the, in our case here, like the readings from an LDR or a photoresistor, then the web server can push those data to all clients connected to it. And at the same time, the clients can reply back simultaneously also to the web server, making it ideal for real-time communications application. So this diagram shows you how you can connect your LDR or your photoresistor with your MicroPython device. As you can see, we are creating a voltage divider circuit with the LDR and a 10 kilo ohm resistors. We then connect the GP27 or any analog to digital converter pin to the connection between the LDR and the resistor. I have used Raspberry Pi TW in this project, but it is also applicable to any MicroPython device like ESP32, ESP8266, or the PyBoard. So, so much for theory, then let's go now into the code. So, the complete code for this project is available on my GitHub repository, which you can download as a zip file or you can clone it using Git. You can find the source code at the description of this video. Once you have downloaded the project, then you can open it using the Tony IDE. So let's scan through the parts of this MicroPython project that displays real-time sensor information using web sockets. The LDR photoresistor module.pi represents our LDR component and it has methods that will return the sensor readings value in percentage. The boot.py is used to connect our Wi-Fi network during startup. The main.py contains our micro dot web server, and web socket application. The template index.html displays our user interface such as the real-time values and our chart. The static index.js and static index.css are our JavaScript file that will create a connection to our web socket server and the CSS file is used to stylize our page. The files micro that starts with micro dot are micro dot specific files which I have just downloaded from the project source file of the micro dot web framework. Let's try to run through the project one by one. The LDR photoresistor module that py contains a class called the LDR which is a representation of our photoresistor. And it contains several methods that we can call to retrieve the sensor readings. The important method here is this get light percentage function, which will display the sensor readings in terms of percentage from 0 to 100%. The boot.py is our standard MicroPython file that gets executed during the restart of the device, and we use this to connect to our Wi Fi network. Just remember, to change the two variables here to match your network credentials. The main.py contains our MicroPython micro.websocket server 
and it handles the reading of the LDR sensor and the sending of the values to our user interface, which in this case is our web application. Let's try to go through what each line of code does. So, in this part of the code, we import the necessary packages needed to run a micro.web server. In this case, we create an instance of a micro.web server and also an instance of an LDR class that we created earlier. Next, we have here our index route that will serve our index.html template and our micropython websocket route that will receive and send websocket messages. Currently, our code is only sending the readings of our LDR or photoresistor and we are not expecting any websocket messages coming from our client. As you can see in here, I have commented this line of code. The, this code that you're seeing here, which is ws.send, is the function that will send the websocket message to our clients. And as you can see, this will call the method getLightPercentage. And whatever the values that we receive in here will be sent to all clients connected to our websocket server. I have added a temporary slip here so that we can give the Raspberry Pi Pico internal system to run its own code and not hug the whole memory. Next, this code are routes that we need to create the static files such as our index.css and index.js. The second route, as you can see in here, will shut down our micro.web server. This part of the application will run our micro.web server. Now, let's go into our index.html page. So, this index.html page is our user interface that will display the current sensor readings from our LDR or photoresistor. The head section here defines some of our meta attributes and the title. We also import the index.css style sheet and the platly.js for drawing the chart. In the body section, we define a text area at the left-hand side of the screen to display the current sensor readings. And the HTML div that you're seeing here is going to be used to display our platly.js chart. After which, we will just import the index.js at the end of the body section. Now, we will take a look at the index.js page which is the most important part of our project. Most of the functionality of our page is done by this file, so it is important to discuss what each line of the code does. This part of the code is where we declare the HTML elements that will contain our chart and show the latest reading from our sensor. This, this is our platly.js configuration for our line chart. The following are needed in order to draw the line chart place. This part of the code is where we are saving our LDR or photoresistor readings in this storage arrays, which is named new sensor X array and the new sensor Y array. We are only saving 50 graph points, so which means the, the data that you are seeing here is only 50. The function update chart will update our arrays. First, it checks if the maximum number of points is already stored in our arrays. Then it will push or remove the first record and then it will add new records for our array. Lastly, once the arrays are updated, then we will call the JavaScript APR for platly.js to update our sensor chart div. Now, this part of the code is where the WebSocket handling logic is done. This is where we connect to our WebSocket server by using this code and we declare several callbacks that will respond to any WebSocket events coming from our micro.micropython web server. The important callback here is this one, which is the on message, which handles the WebSocket messages coming from our micro. 
server. Upon receiving the message, then we will need to update the values in our chart and our list of current values. The static index.css file is just needed to stylize our page. I won't be discussing so much about this code as this is more of a standard cascading style sheet. The micro dot files here that you are seeing are micro dot specific files which I have just copied from the micro dot web framework. So basically that is all how the program runs on how or how the program is structured. Now if you want to run this project then just copy all of the files in here then put it in your Raspberry Pi Pico or any MicroPython compatible device. Then just take note of the IP address here and then access the URL in your browser. Now, once you are able to do that, then you would be able to see this project in here. So that's all for the code and how it actually works. The companion write-up contains uh, much detailed information about how this project works. Both the write-ups and the companion code is available in the description of this video. I hope you learned something. Happy exploring!